streaming. What's up, everyone? Happy Saturday. It's uh, 3.24 here on the East Coast. The uh, discount code for today's live stream, I'll say it out front, is RB... No, it's not. It's actually mega. I'm going to continue the sale from last week since the, uh, we did the live stream late on the weekend. MEGA, it's 65% off my Beato book, uh, YouTube, Instagram transcription bundle. It's a 700-page PDF, 45% off my Beato ear training course, and 45% off my quick lessons guitar course. If you want to support the channel and learn how to play and become a better musician, that is a great way of doing it. That's my ad read for my own courses that I sell so that I don't have to sell anybody else's uh, things. A um, couple things. If you haven't checked out my Aldi Miola interview that I put up a day before yesterday, or actually two days, yeah, two days ago, it's great. For those of you that don't know Aldi Miola, you should definitely check it out. Al is one of the greatest guitarists ever. He played in Return to Forever with uh, Chick Corea. He had a multi-platinum record called um, Elegant Gypsy that had a song Mediterranean Sundance with a duet with Paco de Lucia that's unbelievable. It was a huge hit back in the late 70s. He had a uh, Friday night in San Francisco with Paco de Lucia and John McLaughlin John McLaughlin, which is, um, I think, sold 7 million records. Massively big record in 1981. Check it out. I went to Al's house. I did the interview. He cooked dinner. He and his wife cooked me dinner. And it was amazing. It was really, really great. And, he, and Al plays a lot in the video, which is uh, different than a lot of my interviews because... Um, uh, cause I don't, you know, this, this is the most I've ever had anyone play. Well, Tommy Manuel played a lot in my interview with him. Tommy played a lot, but Al really plays for probably out of an hour and a half. I'd say Al plays a good 30, 30 minutes or so. Um, let's see here. Okay. Computer versus the Benz, or should I say the Benz versus okay. Computer. So I've done three videos where I talked about Radiohead, but only two where I talked about their music. And they were way back in the channel. I cannot, I cannot believe that it has been so long since I've talked about Radiohead, who is one of my favorite bands. Let me tell you a couple of Radiohead stories here, though. So when the first record came out, Creep was on the radio. I listened to the record, Pablo Honey, and I thought, eh, it's a good band had no idea that the Benz was going to come out when it did. I was, uh, I had just moved to Atlanta when the Benz came out. And I remember my roommate at the time, Rich, I'd lived with five musicians and Rich, um, was like, have you heard the new Radiohead record? I said, no. So it's called the Benz. I was like, put it on. So he put it on and, uh, but he didn't put on the, um, he didn't put on the first song. He put on this song. And I'm listening. Wow, right? So, everything... Okay, so here's me. I'm thinking, wait a minute. This is the same band that did Creep? I mean, 
Creep was a pedestrian song that sounded like a song that was added to the record. No offense to Radiohead. It sounded like a song that was added to the record to have a hit single. Okay? And then you get this song, Just, it's called. All right? So, what do we have here? So... Okay, so you have this really weird... Now, that is such an odd chord progression right there, right? So, C. You guys can't see my guitar here. So, C. To E flat. To D. To uh, F. And then they have that line. The diminished scale. That is such a cool line that works over that, right? So, I never heard anything like that. Then he gets into the next part. I mean, that's just soaring. Can't get the stink okay, so. Did the stink the, you know, so right off the bat, this A minor to A flat is really. He's been um, really odd, right? So you get the verse, and then the pre-chorus, this part. Then, I just love that. So C, F sharp, F. Like, completely unexpected. So interesting. That was, so we listen to that track, and then he plays this. Which is Fake Plastic Trees. Which is beautiful song. And to me, this was really a fresh sound that at this time, Two jumps in a week, beautiful, that's pretty clever, don't you boy? beautiful melody. Da, 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 da. Excellent. Flying on a motorcycle, watching all the ground beneath you drop. I mean, high and dry, sorry. I said big plastic trees, sorry. They were both singles. So, one of the things that I like about this record, just hearing these two songs right off the bat is the sounds on it. Great room sounds, organic, um, organic, all the sounds are organic, right? The vocal sound, the reverb, and the voice. Listen. To me, this is just an absolutely perfect vocal sound. Somebody says here, earth, earthy feel. Has a very earthy feel. Don't leave me dry. So, the, and this is very much a natural, like like a rock song. So, if you if you think in context of bands that were out at the time from England, like Oasis, who was a massively big band, um, or just becoming a big band at this time, uh, this was not like that. Radiohead was a completely different sounding band, more sophisticated musically uh, than than Oasis. And I love Oasis. It's not to take anything away from Oasis, but it's a more sophisticated sound. These uh, these songs are no question about it. And then, um, and then we have. Um, 
And then we have fake plastic trees. Now, I'm a sucker for those kind of progressions. I love this chord right here. Oh, that kills me. Beautiful. The dynamics, the organ enters. Beautiful melancholy feel. Natural drum sound again. Beautiful room sound. Is that reverb? Then I mean, this is unbelievable, beautiful, beautiful record, right? The whole record is moody, it's earthy, it's uh, sophisticated. Not super sophisticated, right? Just is probably the most complex song on the record. Um, but the production of the record is, is just incredibly good, right? And I was like, this is a totally different band. This is amazing. And they, uh, everybody was talking about the record. Okay, this was this was just wow. Have you heard the new Radiohead? Oh man, yeah, it's unbelievable. Uh, I went to see Radiohead play on this tour uh, here in Atlanta, and um, and they were great. Uh, not a not a band I would have gone to see, frankly, on the first record. Hard to believe it's the same band. Okay, so I want to move on to to OK Computer for a second here. We'll come back to the Benz now. When OK Computer came out, you know, we were all kind of waiting. What is Radiohead going to do, right? Are they going to, uh, where do they go from here? What do you do after you make the bends, right? Um, well, the first song on OK Computer is Airbag. Wow. Okay, what's the first thing that you notice here? First of all, it has a really cool line that sounds, I think it's a cello, I, I think I talked about this song in one of my videos, it's a cello and a distorted electric guitar. Um, so... It's really going basically going between F but we have this entrance here of this na 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 guitar that happens here. Listen. It's like Da, 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 da. You hear that part in there, and that part on that. Da, 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 da. 
gives you that mysterious sound of the suspension, like A suspended, but you hear the F kind of mixed in with it. So it gives this sound. Beautiful, beautiful sound. Then the verse. We have these really distorted drums. Great drum part. No bass, right? Wow. Killer group. This, I love the textures here. They're amazing. And then... Wow. Goes up to that seventh on the E chord. Beautiful. So you have this completely different vibe. More electronic or more... Um, uh, the, with the distortion on the drums, the bass weights to come in, do, 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 the, like everything about this just grabs your ear right off the bat. It's almost has a psychedelic feel. There's so many textures that are going on in the background that all blend together so well thought out. And that was, uh, that plus the weird, uh, melodies and things like this. If there was no um, OK Computer, there is no Muse, bands like Muse. Because to me, this is really, you know, Muse was kind of an extension of this. This is kind of what their style. Yeah, Muse had, had, had some heavier songs and stuff, but to me, songs like Airbag are kind of where they you know, got their inspiration from, right? Well, what else did we have on that? You had this. Paranoid Android. Completely weird chord progressions. Weird parts. Great melody. You notice how these parts come in? You notice how that part just came in in the, in the left speaker? And then it kind of drops out again, right? So there's all this great headphone stuff that's going on. Beautiful colors happening everywhere. This is absolutely brilliant. These are the first two tracks on this record, you know, and, and you're immediately grabbed by that, the sophistication of it. I thought that that the Benz was sophisticated, but it's nothing like OK Computer. It's more rock, right? It's more organic, earthy sounding, but this is more, um, uh, I'm trying, what would the word be for this? Um, it just, there, there's an intensity to it because of of, uh, of the way that it's or orchestrated. And that's the brilliance of Radiohead, the brilliance of these records, both these records, the guitar orchestration, the arrangements, the fact that the bass on Airbag doesn't come in till the you know middle of the first verse. These are really, really sophisticated arrangements. The melody note, note choices are so interesting. They're so different than anything else that was really out at the time. Um, honest, okay, you know, to me, I'm trying to think of anything that was this sophisticated other than Nirvana, because Kurt Cobain's melodies were this sophisticated. They were. If I think about a song like um, uh, In Bloom, that changes keys like 20 times in, in it. Uh, but this this is coming from a completely different place. And I just love the textures and the ambience in it. 
Uh, before I go on, I got to do uh, another, uh, I'm going to do another ad here. If you, uh, for today's live stream, discount code SALE is M-E-G-A, mega. It's 65% off my Beato book, 700-page uh, PDF bundle. Um, it's 45% off my ear training course, and it's 45% off my Quick Lessons Pro guitar course. If you want to be able to, to sit down and hear, you know... To be able to know that that's a D major nine over F sharp chord as soon as you hear it, that's what you learn, not only from my ear training course, but you learn how to play the guitar chord from my Beato book. So if you want to improve yourself as a musician and learn how to figure out songs on the fly, this is the way to do it, or just, or whatever, any of these songs, right? Um, or airbag, those intervals. Bum, 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 bum. Down a half step, up a whole step, down a major third, E, F, C, B, A, C sharp, E, F. Then it does the same lick up the octave. Now, the only way that you can play those things and figure them out on the fly is if you know intervals, and that's what my ear training course teaches. This is how you become a sophisticated listener, and you can also learn to play along with these records. Okay, the song that really blew me away was not Karma Police on OK Computer. It was this. This is so beautiful. This also has one of my favorite choruses. Oh, man. Wow. Beautiful harmony. Mm. And then... Let me tell you a little story. So, um, this record was, uh, was, uh, had just come out. Radiohead's coming to town, and my band was practicing. There, there was a club. It's still around, but it's in a different place called The Masquerade. It holds 800 people. Now, I had seen Oasis play there on their first tour from their first record. It was packed. So I'm, so I'm at band practice with my band, and, and, um, and I didn't even realize that Radiohead was going to be in town. And our drummer, Darren's like, you know that Radiohead's playing in town at Masquerade. And now our rehearsal space is like 200 yards from this club, right? I said, what? I didn't know that. Yeah, they're playing. They're they're touring on their new records. It's their uh, first leg of their tour. So I'm like, how are we going to get in? We got to go to the show. And, um, and... I think Darren knew somebody there at the club that got us in. So we did our band practice and then we went down and we all w went and watched Radiohead play. And it was on this record. And basically the, the, the concert was, uh, was OK Computer, The Benz, and a few songs off Pablo Honey. And it was unreal. 800 people. So, you know, early in their career, all their greatest songs. I mean, Radiohead did other great songs after this, but these two records for me are, are it. The, 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 uh, 
And it was amazing. It sounded phenomenal live. Just, you know, better than uh, than hearing them on the on the bends. Uh, uh, the band had, you know, the band had been around a couple more years. They'd done a lot of gigs, and they were a much better live band. And they really played these songs well live. the uh, The songs off the bends worked well live because they are they're more guitaristic. Um, they're simpler songs. Uh, this this record, because of all the layering, I thought, oh, okay, it's going to be, I don't know, how are they going to do songs like Let Down, right? How are they going to do this song? Really interesting, right? Now, songs like Karma Police, um, I mean, this was a, you know, these were, they had some big hits on this record. Radiohead became a massively big band on this record. They had started to become, you know, Pablo Honey was, was, they had one hit on it and everything, but people weren't, people weren't talking about Radiohead all the time. After the Benz, though, that was, you know, Radiohead, became this yeah um they weren't the legendary band that they were but after this record came out this this really frankly had they never done anything else after this well i mean kid a was a phenomenal record too um uh this this kind of cemented their um this this really cemented their place as kind of the premier hipster band that everybody liked. I mean, they were just, they were just unbelievable. Um, this this record, you know, when I think about it, if I if you were to say, Rick, which which record do you like, the Benz or OK Computer? Um, in my brain, I. Th I probably say, oh, the Benz, and then I go and I listen to OK Computer. I'm like, oh, no, 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 that's totally not right. It's definitely OK Computer. Even though everything in its right place is is one of my favorite Radiohead songs. Um, but uh, Let Down, that did it for me. That That is a, um, that is just an unbelievable, unbelievable uh Beautiful, beautiful song. And it sounded so good live. I mean, it was incredible. Um, I think that, uh, that uh, you know, I see people talking about In Rainbows here. In Rainbows was, was great. Um, but, you know, for me, bands, when they're, when they, um, as they're coming out, the the it's, I'm always, I always look for the growth of bands, right? Can they do something new? And can they also keep their, can they keep their base of people that like the music that they've done and increase it by writing new music? And I think that really, you know, Kid A, I think that, that as they became a weirder band, to a certain degree, <clears throat> they kept people. But, um, but I think that, I think they started losing people later on, right? And I think some of it is is a backlash, was a backlash of them being such a popular, in some ways, hate-proof band, okay? They're, they were, for so long, they were a hate-proof band. And there's very few bands 
that are popular, that critics like, and that just regular people like. And Radiohead was one of those few groups that, um, that kind of, to me, checked all those boxes, right? Um, and I think it's worth going back and revisiting these records. I think that uh, these are classic records, these two records. Uh, and the fact that they were back to back and they were the second and third records of the band, um, this this to me is what, everything else that came after was, was they, they did, um, they, they did many, many other really cool records. But this is why um, this is why people are still talking about Radiohead. I went to the record release party of, um, of Kid A, actually. I got invited um, to it. And, um, and I thought that record was amazing, too. It really did. Um, I haven't seen Radiohead in 20-something years now. But that is a band that, uh, to me, is just um, just everything. Melody, lyrics, creativity, sonics of their records. Uh, they grew their... Um, they grew as a band doing just interesting record after interesting record. Everything about them. And they were a great live band. They could play the songs live and they sounded incredibly good. Um, so, anyways, love to know your thoughts. Leave them in the comments here. Which is the record, or is it a different Radiohead record that you think is better than than either one of these? I have to say, okay, computer, that's my vote. Uh, but I'll be curious to see what everybody uh, thinks on this. Discount code M E G A. It's the Mega Sale. Uh, Sixty-five percent off my Beato book, seven hundred page PDF. Forty-five percent off my ear training course. Forty-five percent off of my Beato uh, Quick Lessons guitar program. That's a five-hour video course, guitar course. Um, check out the Aldi Miola recording, my Aldi Miola video that just came out, the interview. And you guys are awesome. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you.